it's almost National Pizza Day. So today we are going to do a pizza on the Kamado Joe using the Dojo accessory for all my keto friends. It's keto pizza on the Kamado Joe. Let's get ready, fire it up. Hey, I'm James from Soak and Dad Barbecue, and welcome to Keto Friendly Pizza on the Kamado Joe using the Dojo accessory. Now, I've already done a couple videos using the Dojo for the normal pizza, so if you wanna track with me, go ahead and check out those videos for a great dough recipe of the non-keto variety. But if you haven't seen them, the spoiler alert is the Dojo just came out a couple percentage points better than my best effort without it. And since this is keto pizza, I think it might need all the help it can get. So if I've got it at my disposal, that's what we're going to use today. Let me move the camera a little bit closer and I'll show you how we're gonna set up for today's cook. So the dojo that I have is for the Kamado Joe classic size. So I've already gone ahead and emptied everything out. And for charcoal today, I'm going to be using some Fogo, which honestly is not my favorite charcoal, mostly because it sparks and it's a little expensive, but it's also the least smoky, large, big block charcoal that I've ever used. And for pizza crust or bread or any sort of baking, it's really fantastic once you get past the spark. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So what we're gonna do first is go ahead and just build a bit of a fire. I'm gonna save one or two larger pieces to the side and we'll throw those in once we've got a fire going and that'll help power us up to temp to make sure that our dojo gets uh, to the range that we want, which today will be around 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead, start our fire. So I think that'll be the piece that we just saved to throw in later. Once we've got some base heat, just to kick it up an extra couple of BTU, let's go ahead, reorganize this fast forward and we'll be ready to light it. Okay, so I'm just gonna start a fire in the middle area. Get ready for the spark show. Like I mentioned, this does spark a bit more than I like to get hit with, but for pizza, it's worth a couple burns. Let's fire it up. Okay, so we're gonna make two quick adjustments for getting ready for today's pizza cook. First one, since it's the middle of winter, we have to make an adjustment to how I would normally light my Kamado Joe for pizza. If you're doing pizza at 700 degrees, sort of the max range of the dojo, I find it much easier and quicker to go ahead and ignite the entire cold bed. In sub-zero temperature like we are today, we don't want to do that because going from ice cold ceramics to really hot ceramics in a short period of time, in my experience, is a recipe for some cracked ceramics. The other adjustment that we wanna make is on the Kamado Joe operating instructions for the dojo. It says bring your Joe up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is something that you want to do because it's going to trap some heat in our ceramic, which is help get, uh, will help give us that radiant heat, which acts like a, a broiler, if you will, for the toppings of our pizza. So one of those really important elements you don't wanna overlook for getting a great finish on your pizza top as well as the bottom. But just like with our Joe itself, I'm not comfortable going to 450 degrees fire and then dropping sub-zero ceramics in right above them. So we're going to also bump that down to about 300 degrees temperature or so in the dome. And that more gentle radiant heat will allow our ceramics to warm up and come up to temperature without the shock of inferno mode. So let me uh, rejoin you in a couple minutes and I'll put an overlay on the screen and some of the details in terms of how we're gonna prepare the crust. Unlike some of our normal crusts, this one you can make moments ahead of the cook. It only takes a couple of minutes using some cream cheese, some almond flour, uh, and a couple other details uh, I'll sort of share with you in a few minutes. And then we're gonna pre-bake this once our grill is up to temperature, usually kind of anywhere between six to eight minutes. Then we can go ahead and add our toppings and bring it back out for about another 10 minutes or so cook. Today's cook time, 
we're going to go more gentle for a keto pizza than we would uh, for maybe a non-keto variety. We're going to do the whole thing. Our first bake at 450 degrees, as well as our finishing bake at 450 degrees. So getting that heat in the ceramic now, and then gradually once we install the dojo, will be really important for a properly cooked pizza pie. See you in a couple minutes when we're up to temperature. Okay, our grill is nearly up to temperature that 300 and 350 degree range that we want. So let's go ahead and first we're going to drop in our heat deflector plates on the bottom position of the dojo here. Okay, next we'll drop in our pizza stone just above them. And it is easier if you get your hands positioned where these holes are so you're not having to drop your stone and accidentally cause any cracking. Let me move the camera and we'll go ahead and add this to our Kamado Joe. Okay, so our coals have just started to going. Now normally, I, this for this temperature, this isn't a trick that we would need to do, but I know I get a comment all the time, you're having trouble reaching those high, high temperatures. And so I'm, I'm pointing this out for those of you that are going for a higher temperature than what I'm going for today. Little trick is just to save one of these bigger blocks that you have when you add charcoal and go ahead and add that right now because that'll just give you an extra boost of BTU power to help power up to that 600, 700 degree range and hold it there for as many pizzas as you'd like to make. So today it's a little overkill, but I did want to point it out since that's something you guys have asked for some help on a previous video. Let's go ahead and drop in our dojo and we're just looking to line it up to make sure that the little latch aligns. I don't know if I'm going to latch it today because I am using a pan to hold our crust and I'm not actually sure if it will fit in the front opening. We're going to find out together in a couple minutes. So we'll just let that come up to temperature. Once we do get up to temperature, what we'll do is we will close our top uh, dome uh, vent, which is going to have the hot air coming up and then out the front. And in order to control temperature, I'll show you the setting that we put on the bottom vent. But for the time being, now that our ceramics are all heating up gradually, we're just gonna leave this open and our bottom vent open till we get closer to that 450 degrees. And the, we'll start with our top dome uh, setting and then our bottom vent setting shortly thereafter. All right, we're seeing 450 degrees. Our dome is hot. So let's go ahead now and close our top vent completely and then start to adjust our bottom vent. And almost immediately, as soon as I do that, oh, this is actually nice in the cold weather, is all of that warm air is just wafting here out the front of our Joe, which is what gives us that great convection, hot air movement for the perfect pizza crust, or at least normally anyways, hopefully today's is equally good. Let me show you the bottom vent. So the way that you control temps with your dojo is through the bottom vent here. And so just to start till I can get a sense of how the temperature is gonna react, I'm gonna go ahead and close it down to about 50% and revisit from there if we need to adjust more or less until we're holding 450 degrees at a nice stable temperature. Okay, so for cooking our pizza, it is pretty straightforward. So what we wanna do is first pre-cook our crust for about 10 minutes. So I put it in and after five minutes, just took it out, used a fork to pop some of those extra air bubbles that will start to form in our crust. They can get a little unruly depending um, you know, on the time that we cook it today, not too bad. And then put that back in for another five minutes. After that, take it inside, go ahead and throw on whatever toppings you like. Today I'm just going with the proper keto diet of just bacon and pepperoni. Love a diet where that's considered health food. And then throw that back in for another four to six minutes. Today, I took the six minutes just to help get a little bit of extra crispiness on those pepperonis on the top which benefit from that hot air wafting over from the dojo. That's really the benefit of the dojo versus not using the dojo is that at a lower temperature like we're using today, because we don't want to burn the bottom of our delicate sort of cheese based crust and still get some broiling effect on the top, dojo has got to be the best way to do that. And so without further ado, let me reposition the camera, go cut up a slice and we'll do a taste test and find out if keto pizza is something that can stand up to its own for National Pizza Day. All right, best part of the day. Let's do our taste test. Grab a piece here so you can see nice looking pizza so far. 
can't really tell. Let's find out if the taste buds give it away. So, is it as good as our regular dojo pizza? Heck no. But in terms of anything from takeout, this is the best keto pizza substitute I've had. We've tried all sorts of different takeout. Some of the big name brands have keto friendly pizza. And for me as a pizza lover, they're pretty awful. You know what? This scratches that itch pretty darn convincingly. I'm pretty impressed with it. At the same time, I'm still looking forward to a regular carb loaded pizza someday in the future. But for now, this will help fill that time where I'm really focused on my diet goals. And I'm just so thrilled that we can be able to enjoy this and stretch that period of time longer where it doesn't even feel like we're really dieting. That's pretty darn good. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please let YouTube know by smashing that thumbs up button and let me know by hitting subscribe to catch future videos. If you're interested in the keto series and you've just found my channel, uh, since the month of January, I've done a whole bunch of keto recipes and I put them all in a playlist down below that you can find and give you some other great ideas for enjoying your barbecue. Anyways, it's time for me to go inside and warm up. So until next time, I'm James from Soaking Dead Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.